Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome. It is uh, the 18th of August, and I hereby call to order the August 2021 meeting of the Village Tivoli Board of Trustees. If you would please rise and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance to our flag. The Pledge of Allegiance to, to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America. And, and to, to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, indivisible, indivisible with liberty, liberty and, and justice, justice for all. Thank you very much. And we'll begin with the village clerk's report. Clerk, please. Yes. Uh, so on the past month, there were two payrolls that were processed. Uh, Laura Gal Tyler continues to assist with the planning and zoning boards, uh, with their with the meetings and minutes and the projects that are um, currently going on. 364 trash tags were sold, and um, just upcoming, the clerk's office will be closed on Monday, September 6th, in observance of Labor Day. Thank you, Clerk. Um, trustees, we have two sets of minutes in your binders. This is the July 21st regular board meeting minutes, and our workshop minutes from last uh, Wednesday, August 11th. Uh, is there a motion to approve both sets of minutes? Second. This is going to be easy tonight. <laughs> <laughs> the deputy mayor is away on vacation, so we have to take turns. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Uh, right. And the minutes are approved. Moving on to a treasurer's report. Okay, this month in the general fund, we spent $70,778.63. And out of our capital fund, this is related to the water project, uh, the water mains, the water tower, we spent $641,068.17. Uh, $641,068.17 for a grand total of $711,000. Uh, excuse me, seven hundred and eleven thousand eight hundred forty-six dollars and eighty cents. Is there a motion to approve the treasurer's report? So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? I want to thank Treasurer Dave. We've got some large sums of money moving about in Tivoli lately. Shift. It's a lot to keep track of, and she does a great job. All in favor? Aye. 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 And the treasurer's report is accepted. Is there a motion to pay the bills this month? So, so moved. moved. Take your paper off. I heard Baldino first. Okay. <laughs> Sound travel. It's had to travel all the way across the board. <laughs> we have a time difference between two. <laughs> Any further discussion? All in favor? All right. All right. Bills may be paid. Uh, we do have a zoning report in your binder. Uh, we do. Trustee um, Azrati, please. And Gary Beck, our interim code enforcement officer has been very busy. He reviewed four building permits, issued four building permits, responded to 12 complaints, investigated all 12 of them, issued seven zoning violations, um, zero appearance tickets, five municipal searches. Those are usually in uh, because there is a transaction, real estate transaction taking place. Um, and undertook 22 inspections and provided um, the zoning, Z, a group called Z3 provided code enforcement training. No fire inspections took place. Thank you, Trustee Azrati. Um, we have no agenda items uh, at tonight's meeting, so normally we have a public comment period on agenda items. Um, but since we don't have any actions to take, uh, we will not ask for public comment. We'll go right into committee reports after I uh, announce that our next board meeting will be held Wednesday, September 15th uh, at 7 p.m., preceded by a workshop at 6 p.m., and the regular workshop will take place on September 8th at 7 p.m., uh, both meetings here at the historic Watts to Peister Hall. Uh, moving on to committee reports, Trustee Ezrati. Um, yes, um, I'm reporting on um, the Street Painting Festival, which um, a few things are to be um, solidified. We we had a date of September 25th, but we're working on uh, the registration process and 
that may cause us to move to October 2nd, but we will keep you all um, informed by the um, uh, getting it on the village website when it is firm. Uh, April Marsh has uh, taken on the leadership of this and she's already raised some money. She just went and bought some donuts at the bakery and got a check. So I think she's doing a very good job. Um, she's excited about it and a little trepidatious because this is a festival which I have, um, I won't say led, I would rather say just sort of managed <laughs> uh, for a number of years and through the generosity of people in Tivoli it always happens and it's supposed to. This year we've got some, some issues that we're dealing with nationally. So we've made some decisions. Uh, one is that we're going to offer half the number of squares that we usually do. We usually have 130 squares on the street. We're gonna have 65 this time, which means that all of the squares will be 10 feet apart, which it's an outdoor festival, keeping that kind of social distancing. We're hoping that it will be able to proceed safely and meet the demands of the community. It's a wonderful event, and uh, we're hungry for this kind of an outside activity. Uh, so I'll keep you posted on all of the events. Uh, give you an idea of the kinds of things that we do. We have a number of generous donors in Tivoli, one, one of whom is John Ludich, who managed Classic Auto, if any of you have ever needed his services, he did it very well. Well, we went up to Classic Auto on Saturday and to discover that he sold the business to Brian, who was there, we chatted with Brian. Then, we still had to see John, right? So we drove to his house, went to the back door, knocked on the glass, and John came out and greeted us, and um, he will be supporting the Street Painting Festival again this year. So that's how this process goes. It's a personal one. It's a lot of fun if you're the chair, because um, this community is very supportive of this activity and very generous. So we were hoping we are hoping that it will take place. Thank you, Susan. Um, Trustee Baldino, want to read the court report, at least, or anything else you have to I can read the court report. report on? Yeah. Yeah. Susan, well, I think. There's no right way. <laughs> Your way is the right way. Do I read all of the lines? No. No, the, the back page, the very last page. That's why. Yeah, in the box. Yes, correct. Charges received, charges disposed. Yes, so we had two charges received, five charges were disposed. And we have um, a total of, I'm sorry, my glasses. We have $1,080 in fines, $90 in surcharges, uh, $0 in civil fees, remaining a total of $1,170. Thank you. Peter, I'll see that um, somehow they caught up on all the parking tickets from last winter. There are 20 uh, overnight parking violations in this quarter park. Right. It gets $45. Paying online has increased people being able to pay. And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <coughs> okay. All right. Um, well, it's warm in here. Winter's a nice thought for actually. So <laughs> it's a few months yet, so the parking ordinance. Um, uh, we don't have the deputy mayor here, but if she were, she would be uh, hammering on her two great themes. One is the Tivoli Free Library is the greatest library around, and it's right downstairs. And, uh, there are always amazing things going on there, so visit their website or come on in and uh, check out our wonderful library here in Tivoli. And her other theme is uh, the deer ticks are the worst, and I have heard they've been bad, so be, be cautious out there when you're enjoying the outdoors this time of year. A um, couple things I want to touch on. Uh, the Tivoli Children's Rec Camp uh, has been underway for a week and a half. We have uh, two days left, Thursday and Friday. Um, reports are that it's been uh, enjoyed uh, greatly by the 
40 something <coughs> children who, who are attending. Um, I want to especially thank our counselors, David Factor, Harris Balesi, uh, Emily Rector, and our fabulous new um, uh, director, Cassia Graham, who's just been doing a great job. Uh, we had our second surprise inspection from Dutchess County today, and we passed with no problems whatsoever. Um, they only asked that we get our paperwork in uh, earlier next year, which there's nothing we would like to do more than that, so it shouldn't be a problem. Um, so yeah, it's just been great for, for the kids, and uh, appreciate all the work that uh, has gone into that. Um, the old water tower, the 1938 water tower, is uh, scheduled to uh, be demolished uh, starting next week. <coughs> Uh, on Monday and Tuesday, they're going to work on a valve, which is right in front of the bus stop, which will let them isolate the tank completely so it can be drained um, and then dismantled. So they're probably going to get to dismantling on Wednesday, and it's supposed to take about two weeks. The Memorial Park uh, will be uh, a huge fence around most of it. This fence is going to go from the community garden to the basketball court. Pine Street and back. So the community garden and the basketball court um, are going to be uh, unavailable to folks um, during this period. So please cooperate. Uh, there's going to be a 200 plus foot crane and some large pieces of steel and heavy equipment. And this is obviously uh, a safety uh, concern. So we will be watching and do respect that fence. Um, it will be over soon and then you can get back to playing basketball and uh, picking your tomatoes at the garden, so. Um, Tivoli's Shoreline Stabilization Project. Uh, this has been a 30-year thing down at the river. Tivoli bought land in 2010 uh, from the railroad, and uh, some years after that, we were observing how quickly it was eroding, our, our parcel that hopefully someday will have a, a nice public park on it. So we were able to win uh, two grants from the Department of State, a $50,000 grant several years ago to design a shoreline stabilization project. And uh, we got that all approved by the DEC so it doesn't interfere with habitat, et cetera. And then we got a $458,000 grant from the same program, the Department of State, to actually construct this stable shoreline. And that work is finally gonna happen uh, in September. Uh, we awarded the bid to the winning contractor last Wednesday. So in September, for um, several weeks, weather permitting, um, there will be material brought across the tracks of Diana Street, deposited on the uh, shoreline, and um, and then uh, what the material is, it's uh, riprap rocks that vary in size from yay to yay, and uh, that all gets put along in a four foot wedge out towards the river. You took a cross section, it's a four foot triangle like this, and then it gets planted with all these little plants that get inserted into the spaces to uh, help hold them and help maintain habitat. Um, this project is going to preserve the parcel that this village we all own um, and get us uh, in good, good standing to proceed forward with the park, uh, hopefully not too many years away from that. So. Uh, expect construction down at the, at the um, riverfront in uh, late September. And um, I want to uh, say thank you to our friends in the village of Red Oak who have again invited the Village of Tivoli Board of Trustees to Hard Scrabble Day. And uh, everyone, of course, is invited, not just us. So we love to go and walk in the Hard Scrabble Day parade. Uh, it's a great event. Uh, I think, like many, including street painting, People are having to sort of change the change the model. Um, I know the Red Oak trustees and, and uh, Mayor Smythe are working hard on that. Uh, so that's going to be Saturday, the 18th of September, in the village of Red Oak. Uh, that same morning, uh, if you got your uh, village email from me last week, there's going to be a benefit 5K <coughs> here in Tivoli to um, raise money for uh, research on children's cancer. And um, I sent out an email last week to everybody with the registration details. Um, you, they have a website which is, I love it, except the love has an E. It's a little different than how we do it here. I love it.com. Um, and I uh, certainly encourage uh, anyone who wants to run, walk, or otherwise uh, help raise money for this, uh, this excellent charity. 
um, please do. So Saturday the 18th, you can uh, run in the morning and then go hopefully eat some filling food at uh, our scramble day that afternoon. Um, with that, uh, we'd like to open the floor to public comment on any topic. Okay. I think everybody here knows me, but my name is Eileen Dagen, and I live in Tivoli. And I have a couple of questions and one request. So my first question is, um, could someone tell me why the garbage cans were removed from the village center? Sure. Should we take each question yeah. in turn? All right. So um, the garbage cans on the poles were overflowing all the time, and um, that was deemed to be a nuisance. And uh, part of the challenge there is that they are busiest on the weekends when there's the most traffic and the most business, etc. And over the weekends, the village has no personnel working who can empty them. And at one time, uh, when those were first requested to me by a certain business association here in the village, um, the understanding was that businesses would empty them on the weekends if the village provided them. Um, that didn't actually work out in practice well enough, such that they weren't often overflowing. And uh, so, um, Trustee Azrati has a uh, solid waste committee, trash committee, and um, the idea came forward that we could be a carry-in, carry-out village and not have those receptacles. If we don't have the receptacles, then they're not overflowing of garbage. So that's why they were removed. And what we have observed since is that the complaints about them have ceased, that um, the businesses at least feel that the carry-in, carry-out is working. Um, and. So until we hear otherwise, we're going to leave it as it is. The cost, the estimated cost of having a village employee who is working at a certain dollarly rate and would have to be paid for half a day each day they worked is that it would be over $10,000, which is 2.5% on your taxes. Right, so the, the business is sort of Part of the deal that some did better than others, but yeah. Uh, you know. and, and what you'll find is that the businesses have uh, worked on it in several ways. Some of them took a trash can near the entrance so that if you're, you know, opening a soda can when you come in, you can drop it there. Um, but the fact is that we have less garbage on the street and fewer complaints as a result of that action. But I'd be interested to hear, I mean, you've asked the questions, I'm sure you've thought about this, so I'd be very interested to hear what you think or what you hear people saying or... Well, it just seemed like a mystery. They showed up and uh, they mysteriously disappeared. Okay. And I never saw anything on the website, I never heard anything. It was like we're part of an experiment of garbage cans. Gotcha. Right, so... Yeah. Uh, it, it was like the businesses who had requested them were consulted on the decision to remove them. Oh, so that's disappointing. They asked for it and then they don't do anything with it. So it's not the village's response. I mean, if we had, you know, it, it's just it's probably not the people on the weekends and we're not going to pay them to come out and do overtime to empty garbage can. If other people, I know like I emptied them, I believe Peter is empty. Some of us would just grab it when it was terrible, but um, you know, Tivoli's gotten pretty active, uh, particularly on the weekends, and uh, there's a lot of coffee cups and a lot of ice cream cups and a lot of stuff, and uh, that you know, we, we didn't have a system, that, that system was not working, because they were just draped with garbage all the time. Yeah, they were. They were, and there was no point of having recycling garbage because they went the same and they, place. And they attracted bees and you know, other Right, bees. I mean, the usual. We also um, had a lot of household garbage showing up in them, so, you know, a single small bag of household garbage can stuff your can for the whole weekend. That happened a lot. So that's some other, you know, it's kind of an honor system thing, and there you go. Not to mention household garbage that people were living under the okay. So I mean it what to do with the solid waste is frustrating because I was originally I 
I painted all those cans myself and spray painted oh. recycling and hung them up and like it unfortunately didn't really work out. Okay, I mean, I, I just always wonder. And, yeah. and I know solid waste is a problem behind, you know, the buildings, you know, nobody wants to pay for garbage. Everybody thinks it's free. It's not. Um, okay. Well, I, we should have sort of announced to the whole community that this was well, it would be happening. nice to know. I mean, I yeah. just wonder. Like, it was literally, I think it was like, let's try it for a week and see what happens, and then we can do with other things. But, oh. So, yeah. Um, okay, so the second thing is the water tower is going to be taken down, the old water tower. Um, and so water's been leaking there, you know, all summer. So the part of removing that will close off all that piping and stuff, and they'll take that water away, and there will be no water in the street. So um, the leak you're seeing is on the street? Yeah. Okay, so that's this valve that okay. they're going to replace. Okay. Um, yeah, so the valve's going to be replaced Monday and Tuesday. Um, and the, the fact that it was leaking was holding up the isolation of the tank such that it could be taken down. So oh, so it's not connected. It's part of the water system that's staying, not yes. the water system. Yes, yeah, because even down. when the water tower is gone, there's still a water line that goes straight under it, okay. connecting Pine Street to Memorial and the whole water system. Okay. So, but yeah. Okay, the leak, so that's a hazard in the winter. Yes, absolutely. So that should be over Monday, yeah. Okay, that's good, thanks. You're welcome. Um, and then the third is a request that with all the changes going on in the park, if the lighting over the basketball court can be removed. Um, and I brought this up years ago with Tom Cordier when he was the mayor. Mm -hmm. And he told me that it was a security issue. Um, so I, I did hear that. But if we could move the light to the pathway uh, or the road, um, where people could be secure walking through the park, coming off the bus, walking home, but not have a free lighted basketball court um, 24 hours a day. Mm -hmm. um, and I know this isn't going to be like, oh, something that can be done like that, but um, I know it creates a lot of noise. I don't know other neighbors on the street here. I know I hear nightly games. Um, I do go out and ask them to leave. Um, some do. Um, you know, the other night there was a fire. Somebody set off fireworks and there's a big fire on the pathway. I mean, um, if we don't have lights, maybe it will discourage activity in the park when it's dark. That's my request. Is there any way to work towards changing the lighting in the Memorial Park so that we're not inviting evening basketball or evening hangout on the basketball court. Yeah, um, I would absolutely take a look at it. I think lighting the path it would right. be a great benefit. I mean, there's a lot of, the path gets a lot of use connecting Tivoli through the park and people walking back that way, absolutely. Um, I think, you know, absolutely take a look at it. The, you know, intention, I, I can empathize with Mayor Cordier because when you go by and there's a light on, you can see if anyone's in the park after it's closed and know, hey, I gotta, I do this all the time. I drive around Pine Street and I go in the park. I say, hey, you know the park's closed. I do that regularly. Um, if there were not a light, you know, it'd be harder for me to see if someone was in there. Um, I agree with you, it would be harder for them to play basketball without a light. So I see your point. Um, right, is it just- But they're not supposed to be doing that anyway after 10 o'clock. I hear you, and I've asked people to read the rules. Um, I've asked people if they know how to read. You know, <laughs> read them the rules. Um, and right. it's only going to get worse because I feel that when the tower goes away, there'll be another recreation spot there. It's a big spot, a nice flat spot, so you can have the quarter pipe, you know, another spot for something, and then the basketball court. And it's like a welcome to recreate. And mm -hmm. I'm glad that the park's being used. Um, but we're talking 10.30, 11.30, 12.30, 1.30, 2.30, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock. Um, you know, there's been a lot of fireworks going on there recently. Um, 
I don't like it, but I can sleep through it. My dog, mm -hmm. she doesn't sleep mm -hmm. through it. Um, well, unfortunately, when people keep doing that, you know, we'll have to have patrols and have them go around the cop, uh, go around the park, at, uh, and kick people out of there. Right. Um, that's expensive. It is. Um, and I've seen them all run away and go on the roof of the pavilion, mm -hmm. on the side that's not lit by the basketball court. Um, so I don't see that as really feasible because it's expensive. And do you it's have, gonna, how do you think we can fix this post closure? Well, I think if it's not lit, you're you're inviting less people, mm -hmm. right? Um, and that's a start. And then we see where we go from there. Do you yeah. think it could be not lit without? Addressing lighting the path, like I sort of no, think you need light for lit. safety for people to move through. Right, people want to get off the bus and walk through the park. I get that. I don't think we'd ever want to pitch black for a period, but if the lights could be redesigned such that they right because the pump house is for a pedestrian, but it didn't facilitate right. night games. Yes, right. Is that kind of what we're that's about? what I'm looking for? Okay. Right, so you can, can walk through the timer even. Yeah, it's very we frustrating could, that the, people don't just follow the rules. We could be doing something much better with our time, but such as it is, it is. Um, but it, you know, in a good way, you get a fresh crop every year of kids all getting a year older and getting their license and being able to move about freely. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think that's going to change. Um, you know, even when the nets were removed, uh, they were skateboarding. So it'll get repurposed. So even if we said, oh, take in the nets every night, it'd be like, okay, then the skateboard community will, will you know, take that opportunity, right? Um, but you need light. I think you do, at least, for those sports. Um, so if we could put less light on the basketball court, that mm -hmm. is, you know, what I'm looking for. So, because I know the pump house will go away, um, so the electric to that goes to that. I don't know if that will be removed or just left there. I don't know. Um, well, the um, so that's a well in that house, and currently the well is still part of the water system. That is our least uh, producing well, and so there's some discussion of whether it could go offline at some point, but. Um, I, I think we can. We will absolutely take a look at redesigning lighting. I mean, I, I don't think we want it dark for people who are walking through there at night. I think that would create right, a whole other problem, right? Safety concern. Yeah, yes. yeah. But uh, that lighting could be good for that and not good for playing basketball. It seems. Right. If done, if done correctly. Yeah. Yeah. And then the last thing was the bathrooms. They're open. Uh, I think that's great. Um, there's not this flow of people coming to the corner of my property to uh, pee. Um, and I will say it's been both men and women, uh, which has totally surprised me. Um, so the bathrooms are open. What's going to be the policy going forward with the bathrooms? Are they going to stay open? Are they closed at dusk? Yeah, they usually are closed at dusk. And you know, certainly when the park's closed, open in the morning, closed around like mid-October and then opened in the spring. Now this year, um, they were not open until very recently. So right. for most of the spring and summer, obviously that was firstly a COVID concern. Um, and then secondly, as we approach the children's camp with the unfortunate tradition of trashing the bathrooms that goes on here, um, I kept them locked up until the camp started. Right, so and they didn't get trashed, and they haven't been trashed. I mean, I just looked at them walking by earlier. They're, they're yeah. open, they look yeah. okay. Um, do we just think we're lucky, or? That they haven't been trashed yet? Yeah. Well, it's been two weeks. Okay, so that's... And there's been activity. I mean, there's been, I've had a daily cleaner, and, uh, you know, we have the rec camp underway. Uh, and there's no softball league. Uh, which got them a lot of summertime use um, that often resulted in them being pretty messy. Did the softball league move, like leave typically and go to Red Hook? I think so. I think so. Okay. So it's not a COVID thing? That the softball team left? Uh, no. No. Okay. Yeah. okay. 
Well, that's good. I hope that they don't get trashed and they stay open because it has made a difference for the number of yeah. public toilet users. Well, that's that's good, and I'm pleased to hear it's you've seen an improvement. So thank you. It is. Yeah. Thanks. That's it. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. For constituting the public tonight. <laughs> Um, trustees, anything else? Okay. Um, is there a motion to adjourn? So move. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 734, we are adjourned. Thank you, everyone.